Hey guys, how you doing? John Moran here at my studio, Ghent Glass, which is located in Ghent, Belgium. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be making this piece right here, which is one of my bare essentials pieces. The piece took about three hours, but you can see all the fine little details and all the little things that really bring this piece to life. Uh, one of the cool things about this video is we actually did it during one of our first Friday events, where the public comes, hangs out, drinks some beers, and watches us blow glass. Uh, so enjoy the video, and let's get to work. So, I'm starting a little bit later in the piece. We did kind of start a little earlier and take a few gathers uh, and add the color. Um, this is what I'm, the part I'm starting with right now is the head of the bear. So, I'm kind of first I've added these eyeballs, which I pre-made, and now I am adding eyelids. And then I'm going to add a whole bunch of texture. So once I've kind of added the eyelids, I really melt them in with the torch really heavily. Then I'll go back in and I'll really add the texture into them so that they really blend in with the, the head. If I don't do that, it looks really funky. Uh, I mean, like I said, at this stage anyway, it looks pretty, pretty messed up, but it gets better as it goes. So that torch I'm using is, I don't know, about 2,250 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, around 1,300 degrees Celsius, I think. So it really focuses the heat in that spot on the glass, and then I can really like dump in some detail in one specific spot. Now I'm getting ready to add the top eyelids, which uh, will make this thing start to kind of look at least somewhat like a like a ball with eyes but at least looks a little bit better than it did before this whole process is like one of those things where the whole time it looks pretty shit and then at the end it kind of comes together so you really kind of give it patience which is pretty funny because it it is a uh, can be really frustrating at times if you're not sure it looks like it's not coming together well So yeah, a bunch of texture to make this really weird looking ball with eyes. But uh, in this second, yeah, right here I'm about to add the snout. So this snout is actually white glass that, uh, it was clear glass that's been rolled in white powder and reheated. So it comes over kind of in its liquid form. So I'm going to add this snout and then go ahead and texture this up as well. Uh, this takes a lot longer than it is here in the video. There's a lot of reheats in between and quite a few torch spots but just for the sake of edit like for shortness I've edited out a lot of that so here's where those little details really come in like I've already kind of put all the fur in and made the, the, the nose blend and now I'm adding the ears the ears are the same color as the the head so they'll blend in and I'll go back in and just really like give them a shape I want and then add the texture So after I've added the like little details inside the ears, I go back in to like sculpt the mouth in and add a little bit of color here, just a little bit of glass colored powder, just to kind of bring that mouth out. If I don't do that, it gets lost really easily in all of that texture. 
But once that color's in there, I just go back in and texture it up a little bit. From this point, it becomes kind of one of my favorite things. It still looks weird until I add this little nose. And this nose kind of makes the head for me. Uh, it seems like it would be something just kind of put on and leave, but I really go back in and spend a lot of time shaping it to get it to kind of fit and to feel like a stuffed animal. Because that's the point of it, that it really looks pretty natural and I want to say alive, but maybe that's not the right word. Um, at this point right now, I'm going to put this head in an oven and that head will sit at around 900 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit and I start on the body. So here you take, see me taking some of this liquid glass out of the furnace. This glass is 2150 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I have a little bit too much glass there, so I'm just stripping off a little bit and I blow this body up a little bit. Um, this piece is blown, but it is relatively thick, so it kind of stays, it keeps its form. Uh, if I was doing like a kind of a traditional form, it would be much thinner, but this is a lot of glass for a blown form just to leave the thickness for the sculpting and the texture. Once I have that body shaped up a little bit, I go back in and mark out where I'm going to cut the legs, get the legs cut, and I know what shape I'm going for on this bear. I know I want it to be seated, so I start kind of working some of those little bits into that body so I can bend the legs nicely. It does take a couple of heats. Um, this is probably one of the most edited spots to really get it down to a short heat because that body takes about an hour uh, or more to get from the two stages to get to where all the texture's there and the body really starts to come to life. I start to bend the legs so it's seated the way I want it to. It's always a little bit weird at this stage because it has to look like a kind of a, a stuffed animal that's lost its fur or its fuzz on the inside, but at the same time, it can't look too limp. It has to look somewhat uh, like it has some life left in it. So I really go back in, add all this texture in there, and add these little bits on the feet to give it a little extra like color and a little extra fluff there. So after I've added these two white bits of glass, I go back in and texture them, and then add a little tail, which just does, it's again, it's another one of those little details that really brings it to life. And then from here, I really want to make sure it sits well, so I use the table to make sure that it's sitting flat. Um, at this stage, we're going to transfer it to another rod so I can work on the top half. This is called a punty, a uh, sculpture punty to be exact, and I will break this piece off of the blowpipe onto the sculpture punty. So here I really want to pull these like shoulder areas out for when I add the arms. So I'm going with this little inside tool. I'm using more or less the glory hole heat. I'm not really using so much torch heat here because I really want it to kind of pull together naturally. Once I have that shoulder area in, I'm going to cut it open, which will be the like the wound or the, the opening where all of the flowers and the grass will come out of. Uh, a lot of times I put guts in these bears, but I did not do it on this one because I, I really wanted the flowers to be the, the, the focal point. One thing that's been asked to me a lot is what these pieces are about. If you know my work, there's usually a lot of symbolism and a lot of background uh, stories that go into these pieces. These little bears are kind of based on my childhood uh, teddy bear and it kind of links to a memory of when my father passed away. So these kind of things become like a symbol of um, like our lost innocence and youth and a real kind of like a touch of nostalgia. But the real meaning behind them is that, like, even though they're kind of tossed aside and forgotten, they still have these, they still harbor these memories, and they still have this importance, and it's something that can bring new life. So almost with all of these pieces, even though there's this kind of element of death in it, there's a very strong element of life as well. And it's really intended to have this, like, dual layer. That it's not just a, like, a teddy bear, but it's a teddy bear with very human and lifelike features. And that's what kind of makes the whole thing have this... I want to say uncanny or eerie feeling about it, but also for me it has a very uplifting uh, meaning. Once I've kind of gotten the body where I want it, I do want it to look like it's it's kind of just rested and lost a little bit of its fur. I grab that head from the oven um, after heating that top and stick that on. 
This part's always a little bit precarious because the head is has kind of cooled down to a relatively steady temperature and it's really important that once we put that head on we get it back to the right heat. Once I have the head on I'm really going to work towards finishing up this piece which is adding the flowers uh, one by one and adding these blades of grass and leaves as well. This is the same kind of precariousness as attaching the head because each of these elements is cold coming out of an oven. Cold for us is about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit, um, so I have to work very quickly to make sure that they don't break from the shock of temperature and to make sure I don't overheat them because they're very thin uh, and to get them to melt out the details. I did lose a few blades of grass on this one, but it was not really that big of a deal because those go quickly and they were more or less filler. The flowers, luckily though, I was able to stick them all without any loss because those things take quite a long time to make. Um, for such a little element. So I say this piece took about three hours to make. That's not entirely true because I did make the flowers first and the grass first and the eyeballs first. And as I said before, probably each of those flowers takes 40 to 45 minutes to make each. So they're quite time consuming. The eyeballs as well take about 15 to 20 minutes to make each. Those little details are what really bring the piece to life. But they're really important to make this kind of a standalone uh, sculpture. I'm really excited about this one. I hope you like it. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, you can check out the final piece on my website, www.backdoorart.com. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe or leave a comment in the section below. All right, I'll see you next time.